Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by Quick Simple Fun Games and it is called Or the Mining Game. It's by J uh, Joe McClintock and Jason Lee Steingeiser. I hope I said that right. And it is for two to five players. It takes about an hour to an hour and a half. And it's for ages, I would say, probably 13 and up. In the game or the mining game, you're going to be playing a worker placement. And rightfully so, because you're going to be using workers to mine for ore satisfying contracts. There'll be certain things you need to do when certain ore you need to gather at a certain period of time. And if you can do that, going along the list of things to accomplish, you're going to satisfy conditions and contracts and gain victory points. At the end of the game, the most important thing is satisfying contracts. The or that you remain is not going to be as valid or important, but what is also valid is money. Making a lot of money is important. If you can have the most victory points at the end of the game, you're going to win. All right, let's go ahead and take it down below and I'll show you all the components. So here we have Or by Quick Simple Fun Games and everything included for it. So let's go ahead and give you the rundown. The first thing you're going to notice in a worker placement is workers, and here are the five different colors. Each player is going to have four to start with and one that's going to go on this recruit area. We'll do more of the setup later though. Uh, you're going to have uh, mine cages little tokens here that allow you to gain more resources as the game goes on. Drill bits that will allow you to jump over uh, your opponent's uh, copper or iron or gold or coal or lead areas and basically gain more resources quicker. You're going to have private mines that you can actually take and utilize these guys as opposed to normal workers. You're going to have different cards for each of the different resources uh, or I guess precious metals and uh, you're going to be utilizing these cards to gain additional resources throughout the game. Uh, these things over here are uh, uh, small little, I guess, contract cards. Uh, what exactly are they called? They're called mine cards here. They can give you bonus points at the end of the game, as well as rewards as you complete them. And in order to do that, you're going to need to complete these things, which are contracts. When you complete these fully, there's going to be a symbol down here that tells you how many of these cards you can complete with them. And of course, victory points at the end of the game. And it tells you resources that you're going to need in order to complete these. And there's a bunch of those. These are all the different currencies uh, here. Uh, it's going to tell you the amount of uh, money, which is 20, 10, 5 and 1 increments. Uh, these are all the different ore tokens and of course one for each of the different card types. In addition you're going to have these little tokens which are times 5 so you can go ahead and put one of your resources on there and that'll show that this is 5 as opposed to 1 so you don't run out necessarily quickly. Then the final thing over here are going to be these tokens here. This is the first player marker and these are uh, basically actions that you're going to add to the board uh, with more players uh, so you can tell you in the back five players and uh, four players, three or four players, in which you can have additional actions throughout the game and places on the board and uh, have different spaces to choose from. The rest of these are just going to be spaces that you're going to be able to go on and then contracts down below, which are these contract deck cards here. That's pretty much what you're going to get in the game or the mining game. All right, let's come up and I'll explain how basic worker placement works if you've never played one before and then I'll show you a couple aspects, not really a walkthrough, but give you an idea of what all the different spaces do and how scoring works. So in the game, each player is going to start off with a certain amount of resources, a certain amount of money, and of course your specific meeples or workers that you'll be utilizing in the game. Players are then going to go ahead and set up the board based on the number of players, adding specific action spaces and flipping over these uh, gold, iron, copper, coal, and lead cards. And then they're going to begin by placing down their workers or seven rounds to the game. And uh, you're going to have a certain amount of actions on each round, which are different based on where your workers are. Because if they're on spaces like these here, they're going to slowly go down the track as each round progresses and you're going to be collecting resources from these cards here, which means that your workers will kind of be trapped there as they are working. There's other lo locations that will allow you to get certain things like specific contract cards or mining cards as well as being able to uh, collect uh, advanced aspects to the contract cards so you can kind of advance your contract cards as you go along and then of course there's a marketplace where you can go ahead and buy and sell the ore that you've collected throughout the game and sometimes you might want to use a private miner to go ahead and simply mine a space for you without having to use your actions but that's going to come at a cost and it's also going to be random as to what uh, wh which one of these things you're going to get from the deck because you're going to be drawing one from the deck. After you've gone ahead and selected one of your meeples and placed it down, every player is going to do the same, continuing with the first player until all of the meeples have been done. Then you're going to go ahead and go through this contract phase in which you're going to be placing your meeples, uh, taking your meeples off the board or moving them down the board, refilling these, the cards on the board, as well as filling your contracts. When you have a contract, you have a certain time you have to fulfill it, and during each portion of the game, uh, at the end of the phase, you're going to have to fulfill at least the top line of each of the contracts that you have. 
After you've done that, you'll gain money, and you can go ahead and utilize that money for the next round, as well as if you can complete a contract, you can then utilize money or ore to finish these mining cards that give you victory points at the end of the game. After everybody's done that seven times, everybody's going to have a final round, or a final... Um, Oh, sorry, the final round, the seventh round, everybody has the opportunity, which is interesting, to advance their orders as many times as they want. In general, most spaces are only going to have, you can only plate one, put one guy down, but in the final round, you actually can advance multiple times, which actually lets you complete more contracts at the end of the game. Anyway, enough prattling on. Let me go ahead and show you uh, basically what the different spaces are on the board and how a turn looks like and then what happens in the seventh round. And then I'll go ahead and tell you what I think about it. So back to the game board and I went ahead and set up or for two players. Uh, there was gonna be certain contract cards, which is for three, four, and five. I went ahead and set those aside. You normally would shuffle them in if you were playing with more players. Also on the game board, it tells you where the contracts go and how they go across the board with three. And then of course, four and five, uh, three, four and five players. It tells you if you add them or not over here. These are additional play spaces you add in the game like i said before when you have four and five players three four and five players we're not using those though, so i'll set them aside um, and then of course just put all your workers here and all your tokens on each of the spaces that it tells you to this is the tracker marker that goes all the way down the board when you're playing with just two players you're going to not use the copper area it tells you the three plus right there but you will use everything else and everybody's going to start off with five dollars a plus one for each space they are away from the first player so in this case if he's first he's going to get six dollars you get your four meeples and and then you're going to get one of each resource that is in the game. So in this instance, you're going to be getting four of everything but copper. And uh, you, you go ahead and set these up, and you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, to begin the game, it's pretty simple. You're going to go ahead and select any of these spaces here. And I'll just go ahead and go through talking about them. This one here is the commodity market, and it allows you to buy or sell um, two of a single resource. And then when you place your meeple on here, it will let everybody else buy or sell just one of the uh, of the, of that same resource. So it kind of gives player, players a secondary ability. This one over here will advance orders. And these are orders that must be completed at the end of a round when you have uh, this in front of you. And so you can actually go ahead and do that earlier so that you can complete orders sooner. So instead, if you had one of these places here, you can complete this order. And then uh, at the end of the round, you can complete this order, which means there'll only be one left. So that's pretty useful. Other players will be able to do something similar as well. Uh, permit office, this is going to allow players to buy cards or these mining cards over here based on uh, whether or not it's the first player, which is zero for the first card, $4 for the second, and $10 for all uh, for uh, three. And in this case, uh, the everybody else will have the option for the first card being $3 and the second being seven, but no third option. So everybody does have an option there to go ahead and utilize space that space uh, when it's played on. Private mine, when you place here, you have to spend $5 and you're going to be able to grab one of the cards up here, place one of these guys on it, signify that it's your mine, and uh, you're gonna be mining with this character here, as opposed to one of your own workers. Over here is the recruiting space. This is going to allow you to spend money based on when you get these guys, and you're going to add them to your pool of miners, which will then give you more actions throughout the game. Drill bits are pretty cool. If you place a miner up in any of these spaces up here, you're going to be able to uh, have, if you had, if the next player had this basically, they could go ahead and play their drill bit and place their character on down the line, which is better because you get more resources when you use the drill bit. Um, and what else? Let's go ahead and talk about the mining cage. Mining cages are cool because there's certain resources that are going to need mining cages, level two and level three, and they'll let you get more resources when you have a mining cage. It's going to cost you a certain amount for a level two and then a level three. Each player has a mining cage to purchase. This is the player first player space. In general, just going to go back and forth, um, switching between first player. But if you pick up this, you'll get to go first um uh, on the next round. That's pretty useful. You also get a mining card and you're going to get $3. And I don't have the space. So I'm just going ahead and utilizing this as a symbology or symbology as a symbol. Uh, then the last spaces that you can go ahead and go on are these areas here, which is just very simple. You can go ahead and place your character um, on the top, top, tippy top space. Unless you have a drill, then you're going to be able to place your character one down beneath the, low, the highest player. So that's pretty useful. Uh, after you've gone ahead and placed them in turn order, going back and forth, back and forth until all of these have been placed, you're then going to be able to collect your minerals based on whether they're in your personal mine or, or over here. You're going to advance all your guys down. Uh, any of these guys that you've picked up, because you can also go ahead and place a character on these spaces here and take cards, and even on the top of the deck as well. Uh, you're going to be able to then utilize all your resources to place on the top rows of these contracts, and you must fulfill them. If you don't, you have to go ahead and discard them. 
And uh, after you've gone through all of all of them, some of them have more, some of them have three, some of them have four, some of them have five, you're going to score victory points and it'll allow you to play mining cards. And you're going to get mining cards from either the permit office or from the first player area. There's a couple other places as well. And these cards are going to have a requirement, whether it be money or whether it be ore is going to be up to you. And some of them will actually have a bonus ability on them that you can utilize when you play it. When you play these cards, they go face down just like the contracts and they score you victory points at the end of the game. And you can only use as many as it allows you on the bottom of these cards. Once you've gone ahead and done that, you're gonna clean up everything, put all, take all your workers back that aren't on mining areas. So if they're on these areas over here, and then you're going to go ahead and pass the next player, the, the first player token to the next player, or if somebody took it, they're gonna start with it. And you're going to continue just like that. Like I said before, you can go ahead and gather that four, fifth extra person if you wanna spend more money, but it's cheaper the longer you wait. So if you're the last person to go, you can get it for 12, as opposed to being the first person to pick it up, where you get it for 20. And you're gonna go through that seven rounds, basically. That, that's how it's going to go up into the last round when finally this advanced orders area is just going to be simply this. You're going to be able, everybody's going to be able to use, use this. And in general, you can only place one uh, meeple per space. You can't go ahead and double it up. But in the last round, you can actually, it's in, almost encouraged to kind of push more meeples on there because it'll allow you to fulfill a contract on the last round. If you pick it up on the last round, maybe like you pick this guy up, you can then spend all three of your last meeples as long as you have the ore to go ahead and purchase uh, or basically have enough ore to, to fulfill this contract, which will then let you actually play bonus cards, which will give you bonus points at the end of the game, right? So that's the basic idea of how to play the game. These are all the resources you'll be utilizing and giving to players. Uh, it'll be all in their pool. You'll have, they'll have their own tableau, which of course, this is such a big game that I don't have enough space to show you a tableau, but I think you kind of get the idea anyway. But uh, that's the basic idea of the game at the end of the game you're going to add up all the points on the bottom of these contract cards all the points on the bottom of or on the top of these mine cards and uh you're going to add up money as well every ten dollars that you have is going to score you a point whoever has the most at the end of the last round is the winner of the game or the mining game all right let's come up and i'll tell you what i think about it so just before you go ahead and get into the review of the game i just want to go ahead and point out that at the end of every round you're going to collect based on where your worker is and then you're also going to move him down if you move him down to a point where he can no longer gain access to which is because maybe he doesn't have a cage or because he's gotten to the very bottom that's when the card is going to vamoose and you're going to get your worker back otherwise you're going to keep gathering more and more resources and players that are in front of you will uh, and behind you will also move down the track as well a very important part of the game which i hope i explained well enough but if not wanted to give you that little caveat to make sure you grasp that because you're may you may or may not have workers on your turn depending on where they are if you have, if they're all in the mines you're not going to have any to utilize so anyway or the mining game this game literally is worker placement at its finest. I mean, I really enjoy this game. This game is basically you're sending your workers off to the mines to gather resources to use for mining cards and to uh, use for contracts. The contracts are time sensitive and if you do not comply with them, you're going to have a little bit of trouble because they're going to go away. And contracts not only bring money, but they also bring victory points if you complete them. And money is important but victory points is even more important. The prestige of mining the coal and the copper and the lead. Uh, the artwork is really good. I like it. It's kind of a dreary coal mining town. It does feel like you're dredging through when you're going through it. Uh, these two player game is definitely um, easier to move around the board, just like any other worker placement would be in general. You have more spaces to go and, go and act on. When you have more and more players, there's spaces that get added to the board, but it still gets down to crunch time. And of course, there's going to be less space to kind of maneuver yourself. So you're gonna to wanna to be, be a little more strategic with the more players you play in this game. But we did play two players as well, and we found it competitive and enjoyable. We enjoyed the, our, our time playing it. Um, what else to say about the game? I mean, I just really enjoyed this one. Uh, it has, the components are really cool as well. I, I really like the ore. <laughs> it, it's funny because when I started going through it, I'm like, wow, there is I, a lot of different ore that you utilize in this game. And it does matter as to how you pull it off because some of these cards, as an example, I guess, are gonna be more diverse than others. Like this one has a contract for two gold. Then you're gonna need two of the lead and uh, one, I believe, iron. And then finally one iron at the end. And you have to, plan ahead very well with the more contracts you go it has a bit of a push your luck feel to the game because it's not really push your luck because you you know what you can kind of get provided that you don't get messed over or screwed over i guess but it has that aspect of 
I need this space next turn, and if I do not get it, I'm going to sacrifice a contract, and that's going to make me lose points. And also, I won't be able to play these certain mine cards in the specific order I want, because a lot of the mine cards, which is really cool about these guys here, is they are bonus points, and in general, $10, $10 is a point, and these cards may cost 15 for two points, so that in turn is worth it, or you could actually spend coal or any of the different resources to play them down, which could be beneficial as well. And uh, they're also going to give you abilities, and each ability kind of has its own unique value. This is worth two points, and if you pay 16, you're also going to get a drill bit token, which is pretty good, because normally it's two points in money is just 20. So you're going to want to always go for the cards and the contracts. Fulfilling those is important. Gathering the right type of material is going to be important to completing those contracts. And it has a, a good amount of, of aggressive, strategic gameplay, but I never felt like I was being torn apart in this game. You know, some worker placements can be really, really aggressive, and some of them can be very, very passive, and you can just kind of go wherever you want. There are certain times when I really did want a certain spot, and I wasn't able to get it, but a lot of, a lot of the times when I messed up the folly was on myself, which was kind of nice. I like it, in retrospect, thinking back of how I can do better the next game, and this has that in it. So, if you like a coal mining style themed game, there's not a lot of those kind of things out there. If you like a strictly worker placement feel, with some unique little aspects, whether it be the uh, contract cards and the mining cards or being able to choose the different locations for all the different resources and there's five different areas and how they kind of go along the board and keep the workers frozen there it felt like uh, the one of my top five games of last year which is uh, evil high priest where you have to kind of put your characters on the cultist board this has that feel as well which is nice and I like that aspect uh, this one here is straight on the level of me I really enjoyed this game I would definitely play it again uh, would I rate it as like my top five probably not but it is a solid game and if the theme shines through to you it's definitely one I would suggest checking out look it out on Kickstarter down below in the description or the mining game all right Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It really does help. It keeps pushing us on. And if you want to see all of our videos, you can click that little bell notification button. I know it's a plea that everybody always asks you to do, but it does help us and we we really do need it. We need your, uh, we need your help. Also, go ahead and check out Or the Mining Game, a worker placement game searching for all those great minerals on Kickstarter currently, right now everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of great sites, giveaways, blog posts, and more. Also repping a shirt from a company. If you can tell me what this is in the comment below, maybe I'll maybe I'll try and hook you up with a discount. This is a really cool game I played a long time ago. I'm glad to be able to rep, rep this shirt. I think it's called uh, Kingmaker. Fun little game there. All right guys, that's all I got for this time. As always, I look forward to uh, mining in the coal mines with you.